regular programming to bring you a message from Her Majesty's government. Please stand by and await further information. This is not a drill. They have arrived. Workwear now proudly sponsors Trade Legends. Oh, have you seen those videos? <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys, thank you Don't guys. Eat eat cucumber and stuff. <laughs> Literally. Thank you guys, thank you guys. <laughs> More annoying than me, that. Just get things out there. Hi, thanks for this. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for the follow. Thanks. For the follow. Oh, here you go. Look. Oh, no. Don't oh, bloody, no. don't bloody draw on it. I do it with the nails, though. They. Thank you, guys. Thank, oh. you guys. thank you so much for coming. <laughs> right then, let's go. You starting? <laughs> yep. Even everyone, welcome back to the Trade Legends podcast week. Nine, we think. We just said it's bloody eight. We can. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Christ. This, this show is going to go down the shitter, isn't it? So we've got Darcy from Rattle Kings and Tom from Stickers and That. Should be a good show. Where do you want to start? Oh, where do you want to start? I thought oh. you were starting the show, Pete. Main man Tom. Main man Tom. Here we go then, mate. It's going to go balls deep on you now. Well, it just the so, first just, time. <laughs> just for anybody watching or listening at home nobody knows what goes on with pete so tom is well let's call him my guest because i really wanted to get tom on because he's got a really good story i think um so i first met you you're working for valent yeah in the, in the digital court? sales digital sales department and from that you have you've built a business yeah just just explain to people who don't know what you do what you do uh, so I run stickers and that. Um, so when I was at Valen, I was helping trades. Um, my primary job was selling boilers, but how do you do that whilst you sat at a desk um, messing about on Facebook and Twitter and stuff? Um, so I saw a need for trades to sort of brand themselves. Um, so they'd come to us, Valen, at the time and say, I need help selling stuff. Um, how can you help me? So I'd put their logo on Valen stuff and give it them to help them sell Valen products. And then I just got asked, really, can you help me source some print? And um, it kind of went from there, really. I'd do them a design for their Facebook page. I'd sort some business cards for them and... It just snowballed. And you were like, doing that while you were oh, yeah, doing your... On the side, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Valen. Yeah, yeah. Do you, like make the do you like make their designs for them as yeah, well? Yeah, we do. We do everything. So if someone comes to me, which they do literally every day, and say, I've not got a logo, but I want to buy your stuff, I want to look good, mm. um, we design them a logo and um, literally... We'll send them two or three different designs. They'll pick one. We'll tweak it a bit so it's proper professional like you'd see on anyone's van or anything like that. And, um, yeah, we do everything from start to finish. It's Because um, it started off like, obviously, guys wear branded workwear. Yeah. That's been around for years. Mm -hmm. And they have their vans liveried up, so their logo, phone number, and that on. But you do so much stuff yeah now. we do and yeah we do so it's much getting stuff. more and more like what can i put my branding on and people are really thinking about branding yeah and obviously that's where you've managed to go from yeah so when um like you for example because you are a plumber it's like how do you get repeat business and the main way to get repeat business is leave something of your your mark with the customer so when they go to their boiler next time when it's 
broke, hopefully not broke, because you've done it, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <laughs> that never happened. But if, you, if you leave it broken, then they'll have to call yeah, you back. Exactly. So. But they, they ask him to. I yeah. just turn Can you leave it broken, PB Blummer? <laughs> 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 Uh, but yeah, the first place people go when the boiler's broke is to the boiler, and if your number's on there, who are you going to call? call you. BB Plumber. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> off on my own tangent there. So the fir- the first time you made stickers for me, mm-hmm. I remember I came out to pick them up one night because I oh, I do everything last minute. Yeah, and I came out to you, and you were working in the back. Of a bakery. Yes. So my business partner Ryan, um, his family own a bakery, and there's a lot more space at the bakery than there was in my back bedroom. So we did a lot of just well, it was doming in in his bakery, uh, which is a very manual process. So we needed a lot of space, and um, yeah, did that, you get that was a free food. <laughs> uh, no, I did used to work there though, um, and we got free. Sausage rolls. Nice. Well, no, we didn't. I've paid for that. <laughs> so, I just think that's sorry, really Ryan. cool. So you gone from you were you had a full time job working at Valent, and then you you saw a gap in the market, so you had an idea, and then you started doing it. You're working after work in mm. a bakery. Yeah, I'd I mean, I came at ten o'clock at night to pick my stickers up. Your work, yeah, like gra- proper grafting. Last night I was at work till half nine. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's still not uncommon, to be fair. I'd wake up at half six in the morning, um, check emails, social media, reply to everyone, go to work at Valen, do a full nine to five shift, go home, have food, and then it's probably six o'clock and I'd start work again and I wouldn't go to sleep till 11 o'clock at night. But that's that just goes to show if you if you put the work yeah, in, because it's paid off definitely. now because you're not in a, the back of a baker anymore, you've got no. your own... Premises. No, he doesn't work for Valent. <laughs> Sorry, Valent. I, like, I like Valent. In case you want to sponsor the show. <laughs> I thought they turned this one down. <laughs> you pre-warned them. <laughs> Don't do anything with Trade Legends. He's a right weirdo. But yes, yeah, so you, well, you've I'm now, now you've got staff. You've got your own premises. Yeah. Um, I yes. know you don't want to mention it, but you're driving a Tesla. I do drive a Tesla. It's not. The why night. do you always go? I oh, know when I've made it when I drive a Tesla. It's I just, not the I just, I just Tesla at the table, <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, so when I left Valen just over two years ago, I got like it was pretty much just a garage, and there was me um, and pretty much a table and a printer, and um, that was it. And that was the. August, September time, and then January, I hired my mate, and we just kept on getting busier and busier. Um, so now that unit is just a storage unit where we just store blanks, and um, I've got like an office complex now. In this complex, one. yeah, <laughs> it's not as nice as this one, to be honest. But so what's what's the what's the main difference then from when you first started? Was it just purely that you were doing stickers? What what's What's the thing that everybody requests from you now? Is it still stickers or is it yeah? So the, on most like pop, or? on most popular products are dome stickers, the the mm. raised ones, um, but also like I'm not going to tap the table, but our, <laughs> our work mats as well. So um, Pete, for example, again goes to a job, all branded up in his nice workwear and stuff. Boilers over uh, kitchen worktop. He'll put his nice branded work mat down um, just to protect the surface um, put his PB branded tool bag down yep. and um, bloody hell you're pure brand aren't you but the thing is like the customer sees that it's professional you're looking mm. after their it um, makes a nice photo as well yeah and also if you're media. putting it on your social media you've got branding there so it's all tying in and that's what guys are thinking about they're also doing you know when they leave the um the instruction manual when they fit a new boiler mm. they now leave it in like a document folder that's yeah. all branded up you make those as well yeah and yeah i mean the guys, if brand- anyone can think of anything they want branding mm. um i mean the document people- folder yeah because if something does go wrong with the boiler the first thing somebody's going to do even if you rang valent or uh, yeah. wish the box or somebody the, like that um, have you benchmark. got the have you got the the manual for it yeah and somebody's going to look it's 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 another way of sort of promoting your business, but mm. also it's making you look good because you're branding, you're going this, the next step over 
the guy, you know, if you did a quote and left it in a branded folder against the guy yeah. who's written it on a piece of yeah. paper and handed on it to the customer, or just sent it, sent it via email, mm. you're one step ahead of the other company you're competing with. They might even forget who you are as well. Yeah. Don't forget you, do yeah. they? Or a quote, you know, <laughs> some people at quotes, they'll leave something like a radiator key with their details on, just something. Yeah, just and a, then a magnet, just so, something. So what would you say is your main marketplace? Would you say it's the likes of Pete, like put yeah, plumbers? Yeah, it's definitely plumbers and electricians. Mm. That is 95% of our business. Mm. Um, because the one, the one company that I saw, which is in your sort of marketplace, is the, is it Brick Jackets? Mm -hmm. So actually, like, if you've just got a pile of bricks, actually sticking, in essence, a brick coat over the top of them with branding on there, which I thought was quite a... Yeah, you can get them, like, you can get them printed with your own logos and stuff. Basically, it's just a square plastic cover bag that goes on top of your bricks. So, but, right. you know, like the, you you know, like the Ikea bags? Yeah. So imagine one of those, but thin and then there's like a block of bricks because we load out and we have all our bricks ready for the next day mm. so we cover them up stop them from getting wet so you get these things called brick jackets and you can oh, put your logo you can put your logo yeah. on them and then mm. people drive past and then they can see it all bright yellow and it's got your yeah. logo on every single one because that's um, that's the type of stuff that when you talk about what you're doing and then you see that sort of stuff it's like in all these different type of industries there's so many ways that you can actually promote your business yeah definitely that you never ever ever would have thought bit back in the day it was just literally a board on a pallet outside the front of a house yeah. yeah and that was it wasn't it whereas now you've got all these different things yeah. i mean when when you're doing your s sort of stuff then and you know people are coming to you asking for certain things is it generally the customer that leads you in that direction then that says look you know i want one of these valve keys now you're just doing stickers are you going to do these valve or are you a coming lot. up with stuff and then saying <laughs> yeah it there's a bit of both to be honest um radiator keys i, I give saw, him that idea yeah Did you? and then i had to pay him <laughs> it didn't pay me. I get free four get million free, pounds. I've had a lot of free ride keys and stickers. Yeah, yeah. Well, have you, so, just, have you sold just, a lot though? Yeah, he just doesn't pay his invoices. <laughs> they, they're, they're not free. He just doesn't pay. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all right. I'm getting used to it. Um, but yeah, there's there's a bit of both. A lot of people will come to me and say, "I want to do this. Can you do it?" And um, it's like, "Oh God, can I do it?" And then. Mm. It might take me six months, a year, whatever, but I tend, if it's a good idea and I believe in it, I do tend to what, do it. What was the hardest one to integrate or to come up with? Or uh, Radiator keys genuinely <laughs> took me about two years to find a supplier that could make mm. something suitable and durable that I could brand. And, um, and the other thing as well is trying to find somebody that doesn't want a quantity of like, 10,000 pieces off you. That's another one as well, isn't it? Um, that you, is the minimum order, is to it? be fair. <laughs> yeah. no, that's normally, that's normally yeah. what happens, especially when something is, in essence, it's not a great value to produce. Yeah. But actually, it's like still quite time consuming. Do you, yeah. do you actually brand them up yourself? Do you get them blank and then you brand them up yourself? Yeah, or? so we own the tooling in China. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll literally send an email to my mate Chinese Alan and mm -hmm. say, can I have some more radiator keys? At least he's got a normal name. There's like Apple Betty. Oh, they, they we deal with a lady called Fanny as well. That's a funny one. I <laughs> deal with a lot of Fanny. <laughs> Okay, Tom. <laughs> I'm just trying to be. You, well, you told me you're at work till late, so if you are, you're a better man than I. Am. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, but if you do a new product like the mats, for example, I know mm -hmm. you have a special printer that prints onto the I've mats. Got so many printers, yeah. But for each thing, you have to have a. Do you have to have a different printer for each? Uh, it depends, but yeah. Um, so, I'm for the past three or. four Four years I've been asked for dust sheets rather than mats yeah and that has been a huge investment and is coming soon but it's there's so much work involved in trying to bring something new that no one else has done it's what's, what's the biggest expense so you, you start your own business what's the one big thing where you've done it and you think oh am I ever going to make that money back whether it's a printer because I, I know some of the printers are a printing place down the road is like two hundred fifty thousand pounds for a printer. Yeah, I've just spent nearly a hundred grand on printing stuff this month. Yeah, 
Jesus Christ. It's nearly it. Christmas. Why don't you ask your mum for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine what she'd is say Is there anything that. you want, dear? Any boxer shorts? <laughs> Printer, how much is it? I'll get you it. Yeah, 100 <laughs> grand. But you got to... <laughs> the way I see that is it's like a lot of respect to you because that's a lot of money. Mm. You've got to have a lot of faith that you're going to then yeah, make I, that money back by selling things. It's so a lot of pressure. Risk. Because you are... The dust uh, no, that was not that much. That was... What was that printer for then? Um, that you're doing? Because that's the other thing is when you look at it and you think like 100 grand on that and then what you're in essence yeah. trying to sell sometimes is maybe only five pounds. So you it's, think how many five yeah. pounds have I got to... It's a lot of stuff, but it's... So it's more automated stuff. So I was showing everyone a video of a cutter picking up a sheet of paper and then dragging it onto a conveyor belt, cutting out whatever I want it to cut out, and then going into a finished box, mm. and then picking up another sheet, and it's just on a conveyor belt, just mm. automating everything. Did, did, did you ever do anything to do with stickers before you did no. this? No. How the hell do you, you're working and you're selling Well, boilers. I mean, you're <laughs> selling lights. How do you get into that? But my, my theory behind this is that there's three things that people need in life, and one of them is light, the other one is water, and the other one is shelter. Yeah, fine. Well, you can just get light from the sun. You don't have to buy it. But what happens when, the sun, what happens when the sun goes down? <laughs> you need to sell up, mate. Yeah. The moon, there's moonlight, for a start. What a romantic. There's carrots. <laughs> there may be trouble. Exactly. Oh, right. yeah. Stuff can no. glow in the dark as well, so. Yeah. <laughs> but what, what, what I wanted to say was, so you're investing a hell of a lot of money, because that is, a he don't care who you are, £100,000 yeah, is yeah, a hell of a lot of money. And obviously you've self-taught what you're doing. Yeah, no one says, here's a printing business. Yeah. it's. But also, how old are you? Uh, 27. So, you, you know, he's still really young mm. and he's got his own business. He's... A lot A lot of the people that we've had on the show are, are young and doing doing something. So hopefully, like, that transgresses to anybody watching. Yeah, what I'm hoping is the reason we've got Tom is... If anyone's watching this and you are a plumber or an electrician or a bricklayer or builder or whatever you're doing, if you've got an idea, mm. what yeah. do you need? You need a bit of faith in yourself. You need a hundred grand. <laughs> <laughs> no, just give, give, I want you to like motivate people because that's what we want to do really. You yeah. I mean, the, the main thing, I mean, it, even if you look down that, that board there and you think who's, who are the people that that's come on? So you've got like Louis Fix Radio, like just woke up one morning decided he wanted to do a radio station, £150,000 that he spent to start. Wow. Not everything starts from that. No. But the whole idea of having people on is to say, like, if you just do it rather than go, hmm, it's a good idea, then normally it actually works. I mean, like Jack Plevin down there as well. Like, sorry, Jack, you're right at the bottom. But 25 and got 25 guys working for him and turning over a, a lot of money. Obviously, I'm not going to say how much he's turning over because normally I do, but he's turning over a lot of money at 25. And I just think if people, like even Dave Elwood, got his own contracting business, SQ2, yeah. you know, some of these people have stuck their neck out on the line and and are doing it at a young age as well. How, how old was Ryan, SQ2, 29? Yeah, and you know, Will, second on the leaderboard, he's 23, running his own plumbing and heating business, mm. doing really well. Yeah. So if someone, if you're watching this now, what these guys on a Sunday night, mm. you know, this time next year, you could be sat here and we could be talking about you, about your success story. Mm. If you've got that idea, you just need to maybe just think, is this my cue to go yeah. for it? Maybe. So we'll move over to you anyway, because the, the one thing that I'm super happy about now is we've actually got our first lady from the trades on. So big well done on that, because we've been, we've been wanting to do it for a while, haven't we? So one thing on the show, we always want to sort of encourage women in trades, apprentices, people starting their own business, all that sort of stuff. And you're a bit of a, a TikTok sensation, mm -hmm. should I say. So just just to put this in context to people that are listening and anybody watching. <laughs> Here it comes. Um, you've got, was it more likes on one post than Mr. PB Plumber on his whole TikTok? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm up to I'm got more than five million likes now yeah. and 160,000 wow. followers on TikTok. Alone. Awesome. Amazing. So yeah. just to put that into perspective again, because I spoke to Mr. Ryan Belcher, SQ2, and you've got more likes than him. And he's got how many followers? I think 560,000, something like that. So that just shows you. Yeah. Obviously, whatever you're doing right, 
you need, is, you need, is going all right. <laughs> you need to tell Charlotte how to do it in here for us. So yeah. for, for me, like absolutely amazing. But I want to sort of take you back from that bit first. That's to give people the context of who you are mm -hmm. and where you're sort of at now is, again, how did you start? Mm -hmm. Why did you start? You know, what age did you get into what you're doing now? So just give us a bit of backstory to, to Darcy, AKA Rattle Kings, if you can. So I originally went on site with my dad and brothers just as a labourer because I came back from Australia and I didn't have a job and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I never, ever, my whole life, never knew what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I left school, I was like, I don't know what to do at college, so I did media. Left college, didn't want to do that, so I was like, I go traveling. Came back from traveling, I was like, I still, don't know I'm 23 I still don't know what I want to do I had no idea I went on a site with my dad just as an in-between job to kind of until I found out what I wanted to do really um just as a laborer and I really enjoyed it um it was really hard work but I did enjoy be being on a building site and being in like that kind of atmosphere and then from there I was just like right I said to my brother I want to learn bricklaying and he was like have you got a spare seven years I was like <laughs> No, but uh, I can mm. see what I can do. And from there, I started learning bricklaying. And my dad and my brothers just taught me everything I needed to know. They were so, so good. Like, my dad literally just watched over me for, like, a whole year mm. and watched everything I was doing and meticulously told me everything I was doing wrong and made me such a good bricklayer. Um, Is he one of these dads? Because they're either two, one or two ways. Like, my dad, if I did something wrong, he'd be like... Do you know what I mean? He'd really like it. Mm. And there's others where they'd be like, oh, no, it's fine. You know, was he, is he one of these people that will just say, look, you need to do that again, like sort that out? He is wouldn't he... never, he'd never take down my work or anything like that, but he'd, he'd just watch what I was doing and he wouldn't take it up. He'd be like, next time, just do it like this. My work was never absolutely terrible. Like, oh my God, that's the worst thing I've ever seen take it down. It was always like, mm. right, that was all right. This is how you do it better sort of mm. thing. Like, yeah, I remember one time I was working on site with him um, because literally it was honestly like teaching a child, like going onto a building site, you've never been on a site before and someone's mm. trying to teach you how to lay bricks, which I've been doing for 30 years. Like mm. it's hard and you've got to have a lot of patience to teach somebody who's literally got not a clue in the world. Mm. Um, and it was literally like having a child on site having me. Like I remember one time I, I walked past a profile and I accidentally knocked it and profiles are the things on, if anybody doesn't know, the things on the side of buildings that you put up, you build your corners to them. So they have to be back on level if not your corners are going to be mm. all over the place you'll end up taking it all down i remember knocking it and i was like oh my god right I, I, I saw them all just putting these up i don't know how to tell them i've just not i stood there for a second and i was like right i was like dad i turned to my dad and he was like he'd already seen me do it he was like i'm not angry that you've knocked it i'm just mm. glad that you just told me that you knocked it because if you wouldn't have told me that you'd done that we would have done that and built the whole corner level mm. and it would have all come down again so he was just like yeah things like that i learned from him to just mm. make sure if you do something wrong tell somebody for a start because mm. you're just they gonna fix it. end up taking it all down like buildings aren't the type of thing you could just do wrong and else fine we'll just fix it as we go on the way up mm. it's got to be done properly yeah. so then my dad's friend um phil who is my current boss he basically just needed some bricklayers for a few days um, so I went with him and then I ended up staying with him because he was doing bricklaying every day and my dad was doing like, um, like patios, conservatory bases, footings, plasterboarding, sellotexting and all that. And it was really great to learn, but I just wanted, I needed to be on the trowel mm -hmm. solidly to really learn how to do it. So now I'm, I'm still with Phil now. Yeah. So what was it about that part then, the, the actual bricklaying that you preferred to the other stuff that you were doing is it does that stem from were you good at art or something at like school where where does that stem from that that was the one thing out of all that stuff that you just said that you were doing like footings like plasterboarding patios how did you just think well I've got the trowel in the hand what was it about that 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 made you just go that's what i needed I to do i think that the main thing for me was i was quite i've always been quite creative i've always liked making stuff i've always been quite artistic um i'm not good at art but you know i've been good at like creating things um but i really liked bricklaying because it's something where you can just literally do and zone out and you can do it on your own you don't need anybody else there like 
I'm not going to be able to lift those patio slabs on my own mm. ever in my life. You know, I'm too small for that anyway, and they are way too heavy. I can't lift a whole sheet of plasterboard on my own because they're too heavy. And I just found that bricklaying was the one thing that I was able to do as a woman mm. um, well, and it's just something that I found really enjoyable. So that's why I went mm. with that. It's quite satisfying to watch bricks being laid. Yeah. Also, you've got massive job satisfaction because at the end of the day, mm. you can stand back I built that mm -hmm. and you can see it as you're building it progress yeah. as you're laying the bricks. So yeah, it it's be... really it's really good at the end of the day where you've been flat out all day and you look back and you think, God, we have done a lot of work today. Mm. And it, it is, is a really skill. Satisfying. It's it's a skill. So it's it's like when we bend pipe. Mm. It's just nice because it's a skillful Cur thing. Curved walls always bog on my mind because you look at a brick and you think it's straight and then mm. the way that people yeah. just can curve a wall and it looks oh, it's effortless. You know, putting mm. all the different sort of shapes and bends into something like always like always boggles my mind. So working with your dad, did you always get on see eye to eye? Because I worked with my dad and I would constantly like be battling with him because he's obviously telling me what to do because he's the gaffer and he knows and he's training me. But because I'm his son, you're like rebelling against it. kind Yeah, of. like I just don't take criticism very well. <laughs> so <laughs> there was always going to be an argument there, you know, mm. Um Although, like, now I look back and I'm like, yeah, I, I get it. He was right. But, you know, I'm just... Yeah, you say you say that now you're older, yeah. but when you're young, it's hard to see that. Yeah. And I used to do it all the time. He used to tell me, no matter what job you're going into, take your kit bag in. But mm. I was thinking, well, I'm only going into changing the immersion here. I only need these, these this, this and this. Mm. But he would always... Because if something goes wrong, if somebody you else, If kit. somebody else told you that, because I'm the same with my dad, if somebody else told me, I'd listen do, to it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's your own. with Phil, my boss, he tells me something. I'm like, yep, okay, and I'll crack on. If it was my dad, I'd be like, I, I know, yeah. you know, Stop and there, there would, there would always be like a little bit of snottiness there. But that's what I mean. He had a patience of a saint to to teach me and my other two brothers as well. He mm. taught all three of us bricklaying. Are you, are you all working on the same? My dad are they, and my are they two brick brothers as well. Yeah, my dad and two brothers work together, mm. and I work with Phil. Okay. But sometimes we like team up when we do big jobs and we all work together and that's really fun because mm. um my dad was the best man at Phil's wedding. They've been best friends forever. Yeah. So we we're all like really, I'm really close to my family and stuff. So dad didn't care like that I went and flew the nest and went with somebody else cuz I'm not going to stay with him forever and he didn't want me to stay with him mm. forever, you know. He wanted me to go out and do all these things by myself. Yeah. <clears throat> But it's good because like you've learned from your dad, your brothers, and now Phil. Mm -hmm. So you've got like f a mixture, mixture yeah. of experience, and then yeah. you'll become mm -hmm. a pot, you know, yeah. amalgamation of all hopefully that. a molded, yeah, great. I mean, I mean, great layer. Like when, when we're when we're talking, because obviously, like I, t I listen to you talk, and it seems like it's like the most natural thing for you. But the one thing we discussed before we, we actually sat down here and started filming was you don't see many female brick players mm. like why why do you think that is obviously there's there's quite a few female plumbers and stuff now that we see yeah. carpenters and stuff like that why do you think maybe that there's not as many female brickies or i think the thing with bricklaying it scares most of the girls off because bricklaying is a is a heavy job you have to do a lot of heavy lifting mm. um but you know that probably and you have to work outside and it is cold you know with plumbers and electricians you can work inside quite often Pampered. whereas <laughs> 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 with um brick laying it is it, it is really rough and tough so a lot of girls i think would deter from doing that mm. um but actually it's my dad always said it's actually quite a delicate job you know you're not just going in and rah, smashing down loads of muck and you know building walls you actually yeah. it's also delicate you can't be like you cannot be millimeters out of place mm. everything has to be yeah. bang on and level and plumb yeah. so it's not just and you know what you're only picking up one block and one brick at a time you never um, i mean you load you can load out and stuff but mm. you just carry as much as you physically can you don't have to just go in and be the biggest best person on site like i don't carry as much as the boys do mm. but you know i work really hard all day every day and that mm. just makes up for it you know as long as you've got like the good I attitude it's just more about your work i always think in my head it's not about how much somebody can carry mm. it's about the quality of work mm -hmm. is yeah you might get somebody that bashes like a wall up super quick but actually you just he'll end up on that what's that building inspector on tiktok snag shirt <laughs> yeah <laughs> Snags. that is absolute, oh. I was say, absolutely absolutely shocking, shocking. shocking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um 
But the thing is, like, so you say you're not, say you're not as strong as blokes on the site, mm-hmm. but in any job, let's say you work in a bank and mm-hmm. you do accountancy or whatever, mm-hmm. there's going to be someone who's better at maths than you, mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter mm-hmm. if they're male or female. Mm-hmm. So does that mean they get more done in a day because they're quicker at working stuff out? It, it doesn't matter to me. Like there is not much people are d- that good at I different can't things. do. Like on site, I can pretty much do. Um, anything that the boys can do there's there's really not much that i can't do mm. that they can't do you, do. do you think that puts ladies off then is they're thinking in their head like it's gonna be hard and yeah. heavy yeah but it is in the beginning uh when i started out i used to go home with a, like a, such a bad back every muscle would ache i'd mm. even go home and cry sometimes i'd be like it was such a hard day but mm. as you go on your body just gets stronger and you you don't i never ever go home and hurt anymore ever. i'd probably go and cry yeah, I do. <laughs> like, look at you. That's what we should maybe do with the show. It's me and you go and do a different trades job for a day. Come on site. And actually film it. Yeah. Actually go yeah. over there and, see, and see, if, see if we can lay bricks, me and you, at the end of the... <laughs> uh, in a Premier Inn. Uh. It's weird because, like, so, you know, when um, you did it recently, we did a trade show. Mm. Yeah. So I can work all day, whatever, uh, fit in a bathroom, fit in a boiler, full central heating system, and then... I'll be fine at the end of the day to go gym, do whatever. You go to a trade show where you just have to stand around talking to people and because it's not what you're used to. Mm. By the end of the day, all you're doing is stand around talking. You're absolutely shattered. Mm-hmm. You just want to go to sleep. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. It's because your body's you. It gets used to doing stuff. It's because he's a yeah. miserable git normally. You don't talk to anyone. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, I do. <laughs> he's like, thanks, so. sir. I'm never miserable. Never been miserable in <laughs> my life. But yeah, it's like you do. You'll get used to it. Your body adapts to it. Mm. Yeah. So have you have you done being on site with your dad and your brothers? Mm-hmm. Have you had any problems with trades? Like we everyone disguises it as banter, but mm. have you ever had any like bullying or anyone being a bit more than banter because they don't like you or any? Have you suffered anything? Like I've on site. I've never ever had anybody ever show like do anything wrong to me or say anything nasty or uh, never ever i've been on yeah. site with loads of i've never been on site with a woman uh, every, i've probably been on site with over uh, on like people come and go so over hundreds of men and they come in and go oh a, a lady and they're like they're actually really surprised they're like mm. good on you that's all they ever say is like good on you good for mm. you they never yeah. like come on site and they're like oh i'm not working with her never Honestly, mm. they come to work and they are like so impressed to see a woman on site. Mm. They're just like, yeah, they're just blown away. They yeah. honestly are yeah. just really it's ne- happy. It's never really in cool. Like we talk about apprentices in school and, you know, like how it's drilled into you've mm. got to go to uni. If you don't go to uni, you're never going to make anything if you like. You'll never be a doctor, you mm. know, all that type of stuff. It's like I don't feel at like school level either that people are encouraged enough, mm. especially girls or guys to go into yeah, they never are, are they? It's always like did you, you're going to Did you ever have any of that at school? Or was it just literally purely from your dad's sort of side of things that made you yeah, think? Yeah, I never wanted to be a bricklayer. I went, I used to go on site with my dad when I was younger and just like, I don't know, just if he had some bricks to clean off, he'd, you know, give me a tenner just for the day to clean off some bricks and stuff. Just, mm. But that never made me want to go on site or anything. Um, mm. But my parents are property developers. I moved 18 times before I was 18. Yeah. I moved every single year. Yeah. It was just crazy. We were always renovating. So it was probably drilled into me from a young age with like subconsciously knowing that, you know, mm. that was probably the path I was going to go down without even realising it. That's like Ash Mahoney, wasn't it? You remember I said to him, I said, how many times has your mum moaned at your dad because the house is a building site? And he's like, yeah. I think this is about the seven. 17th time. Yeah. No, he said the same. So he's, Ash, Ash, Ash was on a few weeks back mm. and he, he was literally like, we're doing an extension now on the current house. And he goes, I think this is the last one. So that must be like, you know, if you've grown, if you've grown up around it, then yeah. it's, it's probably subconsciously rubbed off on you, hasn't it? I've lived in a building site my entire life. So mm. going to work on a building site feels like home. <laughs> yeah. But he, I think Ash has, Ash has got like a few brothers and sisters how many brothers have you got four brothers one sister four brothers one sister and yeah. living on a building site so your mum's done to be honest done really yeah, well we live on a farm at the moment and it, yeah. it's it's getting there it's it's still a project but um yeah this is hopefully our forever home we've mm. lived there now for nine years so we've lived there for quite a long time and we all still live together mm. so it's a madhouse yeah on wow. a farm with four younger brothers yeah. and are you the eldest then? No, my sister's one year older than me. Oh, oh okay. we were all in the space of eight years. 
Bloody hell. Wow. <laughs> it's so, we were really close in age. <laughs> what do they do in Norwich? What do they put in the water? I'm not hardly spring, that's all I'm drinking now. Mental. What's your favourite part of the job? Um, my favourite part of the job is the boys I work with. I get along with them just so well. We have so much fun every single day. Like, get to work and you just... Everyone's just happy, even if they're not happy, by the end of the day, they're happy because we just banter all day, talk rubbish. We just, you know, you get a mix in, you got your bricks there, you just crack on. And without even thinking, you're just like conversation just flowing. You just spend all day talking, listening to music. Mm. And that's just my favorite part of the job. It's like, it's not anything official. I worked in a job before in an office where I couldn't even, wasn't even allowed to yeah. talk, you know? Yeah, none of you. Yeah, chain to you. And <laughs> to work in a job now where I can literally put whatever radio station I want on, sing all day, talk about what I want, swear, just be like one of the lads. It's mm. just it's just great fun. Mm. And I do honestly just like prefer working with boys just because they are just mm. have a lot more banter and they are just funny to work with. But if you don't get the banter and if you take stuff offensively, it's not going to work because they they do like say stuff like that. Oh, that's good for a girl and stuff. But that's only because I say, oh, that's all right for a for a boy, you know. Yeah. And I give if you can't give it, you like you can't take mm. it either, you know. Yeah. They only say things as a joke, and it's just all banter, you know. Mm. You've got to be able to. To, to, to give it to back give, to, to them to, just to, as to, hard to give to give and take. I mean, yeah. there is there is a line to some of it. But you have to be able to, to give and take. Yeah, it, speaking to, like I've spoke to a lot of um, female gas engineers and plumbers mm. and a lot of them have I, had a hard time. I think some of them get a hard time from customers as well, especially when a lady turns up and a guy, like I've, I've heard of like a lady actually turning up to do a job and then the guy going, well, you're not, you're not doing my work in yeah. my place. So I think maybe sometimes it's even more prevalent from a customer yeah. than say. I had the customer come onto site the other day and he had he was showing somebody around. He came in the room and he was like, this lady here is the best bricklayer on site and was just like telling this uh, his friend mm. who I was and what I was doing and mm. just telling her how great I was. And like mm. the customers are always nice to me. I've never, ever had a mm. customer be, be bad. But maybe that's because I go around with a group of lads and I'm not just turning up on site with my pink toolkit and pink hard hat and just like, <laughs> you know, I'm with a group of lads. So you know. And just putting it out there, you do want to have a pink hard hat. I have a shot. pink hard hat. <laughs> I already have just a pink hard hat. <laughs> So, ladies and gents, if you want to save big on some big name brands, then Trade Legends is the place to do that. Head on over to www.tradelegends.uk forward slash discount. So, what's the, what's the worst thing about your job? Mm, when Podcast with you. It's <laughs> <laughs> when it's really like that, right? wet yeah. and muddy and it's cold. That yes. is, the, and you have to go in. There's not like, oh, I'm not going to go in today because it's muddy on site, or you have to get up and go, and you're freezing, freezing cold. Bricks are frozen. You're on a scaffolding. You can't even move because you've got so many layers on. Winter's mm. the worst part of the job. Yeah. It just being cold. Mm. What do we say to Ash when it's raining? No lay, no pay. Yeah, no lay, no pay. Which yeah. I didn't even realise existed. And like, have you yeah, got no a favourite no a favourite thing to build? Or have you ever worked on anything like really big or really interesting? Um, I really just like getting on um, just a massive flank and just running in all day. That's great fun because you don't even have to think. You're just going. But we did um, we did this huge wall once. It, was, it had to be probably about, oh, I want to say about 100 metres. And it just went straight up. It had a huge curve. The curve must have been about 20 metres. And that was really fun to do because I, I just enjoy learning and doing new things. Anytime mm. we do something new, I'm really interested. I'm like, right, how, how do we do that? Yeah. Like, same with the straight bricks. Like, how on earth do you curve a straight brick? Then mm. seeing it all laid out, we built the curve and then, like, we mm. had the, the stencil. Then we built the curve and just seeing all that be made because you can't just put, like, with brick laying, you put a string either end and you lay to the string. But with a curve, you can't curve the string round. So you mm. have to, like, everything is just leveled all the way up and plumbed mm. all the way up. So that's just really interesting. Anything new, I just like to learn. I'd, I'd be happy to learn something new every single day. Mm. And in this job, luckily, I pretty much do, mm. yeah. you know. It's the same, same for you. Because the, the, what ends up happening is new technology moves, new tools come out, new ways of, like, press fitting for you. Yeah. New, new things. Or even old stuff, like I'll occasionally see something that's really old that's lasted. Mm. And even now, if it's something I've not seen before, I can ring my dad and say, oh, 
got this on a job what is it mm. well, that's interesting to then because then you want to know how does that work mm. um why is it doing that why is it why is it not working that's the probably the the best part of my job fault mm. finding because it's challenging you uh, you know fixing a toilet it's mm. bread and butter jobs it's easy it's boring you can't motivate yourself well i couldn't motivate myself to go to work and just fix toilets all day mm. so it's nice to have a challenging fault well, things like that where did your logo and your name come from then everybody always asks me this it's isn't it, it's like a cobra isn't it is it a cobra yeah it's a rattlesnake yeah but the whole um the whole thing behind rattle kings was when i working with my dad and brothers is we always used to say we rattle them down because mm. we used to go so fast we'll just we'll just rattle them down real quick or just rattle that corner up that's mm. what we used to say so when we came up it was actually my brother louis idea to start the TikTok, mm. and now i've just left them and gone off on my own. <laughs> I decided we stuck with the name. He oh, came up. See ya. Oh, <laughs> see ya. He's going to see me in a few years' time yeah. when I've got millions of followers. We were like, you owe me yeah, some money. That was, that was my idea. <laughs> yeah, so he came up with the name Rattle Kings. Um, mm. Even though I'm a girl, we didn't want to call it like Rattle Kings and Queens. We just stuck with Rattle Kings. And then then that is, has been where it's been from. But I, I got my logo design just from some guy on Instagram. Um, I don't know. I just typed in, on. I found it on Instagram. I just mm. went logos, clicked on a logo. Clicked don't on say the, Vista Print again. It wasn't Vista Print. <laughs> it, I don't even know who it is. I just said, I just messaged this guy. I was like, can you design me a logo? Mm. He was like, yep, this is a price. And then he just, I sent him what I wanted. I thought, well, rattlesnake on some bricks because. <laughs> as a you know that's it's, the only thing i could think of well you, you say that with a it's, crown on it's one of those things that actually like even i remembered mm. being like a manufacturer like you mm. stumble across it and you think well, actually that's different to what any but nobody like people you know like we said about gmv booth and people with three letters or hhp like will yeah is it's 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 completely different yeah i did i did say i want a snake on some bricks with a crown and then mm. someone just designed that for me so he did a good That's job a good it's brief. exactly it's a good brief. It snake bricks crown yeah sure. <laughs> Literally. you'd love that brief wouldn't you be like so simple not like how <laughs> it's got to do this 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 and this so yeah what, what about your name where did that come from who was whose idea was that um so me and my old boss now just may sigh mm. um we were sat around the table and to be honest we was just going through twitter handles that weren't taken <laughs> that's the one is you find a really good name you're like domain.com yeah and, then you're like, and it's not available no i can't have that one then you try another one mm. but yeah. it's just a local thing it's like what you up to tonight are we doing this and that and mm. what what do we do someone asked me what i do i print stickers in that there's a lot it's, there's a lot in a name though like mm -hmm. you, you're not going to forget rattle kings no, no. you, and you won't mean? forget yeah. stickers in that either like well, that's just a catchy say, name. Oh, just in case yeah. anybody does stickers in that rattle kings <laughs> <laughs> yeah, done it. plugged it don't need to plug it now yeah thank you mate well done do yeah want... because people were typing on youtube stickers people will honestly type um on google they'll honestly think oh, i need some stickers and some other oh, it's bits in the name i'll, as I'll well. just type in stickers in that or, and then your name will come up, literally stickers in that. Yeah, and that's literally what we do. We do stickers in that. There's not, not no more to it. Mm. So Clever. let's talk about your TikTok. Mm -hmm. So how did you get into that? You said it was your brother's idea. Yeah, so I didn't even have TikTok. Uh, I just wasn't really interested in it. And then my brother was like, right, all these, I go, he goes, I go on TikTok, all these bricklayers are doing this. They've got loads of followers. We can do exactly what they're doing. Are you, so, the, are you the biggest bricklayer now out of all those people that you used to follow? No. Who's who's bigger? I who's, think Stu who, Compton's the biggest. How many followers has she got? He. Yeah, how many followers has he got? Oh, he's got over a half a million on TikTok. And on Instagram, he's he's just way up there. Probably. I think he's probably got the most out yeah. of everybody, I would probably say. If you, put his, if you put the, his YouTube, bricks. Instagram and TikTok together, he'd have yeah. the most out of everyone, I should think. Because when I watch bricklaying videos on TikTok, it's normally guys laying bricks saying i'm earning 70p Ooh. a brick or 50p a brick mm -hmm. and just bullshitting out much thrown in a day mm -hmm. and then there's just comments of comments of people saying you're not earning that and it's you know, yeah it's just an argument in the comments all the time about yeah. how much people earn. 784,000. wow yeah he's got a lot unbelievable in it he's got a lot but so is your content is it you working do you do tips funny stuff yeah a bit I, of of I literally do everything like the when i first started out um i literally posted like three or four videos and then i posted one video of me 42 laying of <laughs> like, 42 million views 42 million views 
All right, it's not that good. No, but that, just, <laughs> like that, that, that is like, I know we talk about social media a lot on here, but that just blows my mind. Like laying, laying mm. some bricks, he does rattling like, them down. Yeah. 40, 40, 000, 42 million. million views. He does like loads of satisfying videos. Uh, so that's how like, I think if you can make content that isn't just for bricklayers, that isn't just for trace people, that is for literally everybody on TikTok, everybody likes satisfying videos. Mm. And he does loads of really satisfying videos, which is mm. where he's got a lot of his likes and followers from, because yeah. people want to see that every day, mm. you know? And the reason why mine is different is because I'm a girl on the building site. Like I posted four videos of my brothers, nothing. Posted one video of me laying a block, Nine million views. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Sorry, bros. You're just boring. <laughs> boring. Then we like had competitions. And, you know, they'd be like, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. They'd film it. I'd put it on there. And then we'd have competitions who could get the most. Because I had a few go viral. Louis had some go viral. Jody had some go viral. Mm. So it was quite funny us having competitions of who could get mm. the most views and stuff. Um, and then now I've just had one go viral like two days ago. It, it's gone over 7 million views, got the most likes I've ever had, over oh. 1 million likes. And the boy, Gosh, it's got shocked. the boys in it from my site. Yeah. So you can imagine the hype that they're going through. <laughs> uh, you, you only got that because of us, you know, that's because <laughs> we're in there and, you know, post one video of us and you get the most likes. And I'm, it's never, it's, I'm not going to hear mm. the end of that now. But, mm. you know, everybody on site loves to get involved in TikTok. I don't care if yeah. you don't like to sing or dance or anything. Mm. As soon as I go, can you do a TikTok with me? They're like, where do you want me? You know, straight away, they're just yeah, like, they're cool. so happy to be in them. I mean, did you, did you ever think when you started it that that, that would be like somewhere where you know it would be like that for you did you ever think i'm starting this tiktok and like you know because i swear you, you start your social media and you never you never think like you'd be happy to get to like three thousand followers you'd mm. be like oh i got three thousand when but, i got a thousand i was like oh my god like people actually want to watch yeah. this stuff and um i really think that has helped me stay focused on bricklaying because every day mm. I, I want to do tips. I want to learn stuff because I want to tell my followers what I'm doing. Um, and also in my live videos that I do, mm. I just do a live video for like two hours and I'll just chat to the boys, chat to the camera, talk about what I'm doing. Um, and people just love to watch a girl talking about that. Mm. Um, I don't know what it is, but it's just seeing a girl do something this different mm. and just chatting and, and knowing what I'm talking about, you know? Yeah. I'm not just sitting there being like, now I'm laying a block. It's like, I'm talking about what I'm doing. I'm talking mm. about how to do things. And people just like to yeah. watch a girl doing that and yeah. talking about it. And so many girls have messaged me in my mm. DMs being like, I'm now gonna do bricklaying because I saw you or I show my daughter your videos and mm. like, you're so inspiring. And that is well, just- I guess if you're doing a live and you're actually talking to the lads, you're working, you're talking to the camera, the people watching it are experiencing what it's like for you working on site and they're getting an experience in the job really, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, is, is that something as well? Cause you talk about like, potentially teaching the next generation. Is that something like, if, if you've got that impact on people mm -hmm. watching a live, like you said, it'd be really satisfying to like actually teach younger plumbers how to do certain things and like, you know, become better plumbers. Yeah. Is that yeah. something from from your side in the future maybe that you'd, you'd like yeah, to? Yeah, I was honestly thinking about this the other day because I think that I would be a really good teacher because mm. I can expa explain stuff just really, basically and i think mm. like just doing i was thinking about doing like an all girls like bricklaying class like at some point during the future just all girls though any because i get so many girls saying i don't want to go to college because i'm scared of the the boys you know i, yeah. I don't know what's going to be like going i don't know anything if mm. i could just do a starter to bricklaying class like in the evening girls could come they could literally learn a bit and then that might help them then maybe, go to college maybe that's your youtube Brick, yeah bricklaying masterclass and you just talk about it on your youtube yeah i i need to start up i really need to start up my youtube and get that going because i think that girls would really like to watch that you know I my, think any any anybody anybody would like yeah, to, to watch that yeah but I, not, my know. following is like it is quite 50 50 um with with guys and girls but i would want to do it to help the girls get mm. into that you know like the lads i always find like guys have it a bit easier because they've got they've gone to work with their dad or they've you know their their uncle mm. done brick lane they helped them when they were younger and you go into a college and it's full of lads mm. girls don't have that so it's hard for them to like go into a college room and they're the only girl and there's like 
30 guys there that have all been and done it with their dads and mm. they don't know have a clue about it and it was never advertised to them as a, a lovely job you know they know they're mm. going to go there and it's going to be hard work so how do we try mm. and get push girls into the industry and try and tell them that it is actually a really good yeah. job you can actually earn seriously mm. good money yeah um and it's fun yeah how do we so how 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 do you think you can do that is there is there any way that you feel I that people so. people aren't doing it now that you could potentially do to get more ladies to go into bricklaying? I hope that just by what I'm doing is hope is is helping mm. getting women in the trade. It will do because, like you say, at the minute it's plumbing, electric, bricklaying, it's male dominated, mm. and the the apprenticeships, the college courses are going to be male dominated. And if you've not got any other girls in a mm. class it's going to be very daunting for because it's school even age it's 16 mm. now if you're going to inspire more girls to go into it the college class might start getting two girls apply at a time mm -hmm. and then if there's two mm. girls then, might be then three, there's going to be yeah. three and it'll go it will snowball from there so people like you inspiring once they start going in and other girls will then want to they'll yeah. feel comfortable to do it because there's girls on the courses mm. Things are like definitely changing. Um, like lots of brands now are releasing women's workwear, like Scruffs, massive brand. They're now releasing um, a women's workwear range. Mm. And I'm going to be their first female brand ambassador, mm. which is awesome. like, you know, mm. they are, they've never ever had a female brand ambassador before. Yeah. So that's just one it's big company taking a big step there mm. to be like, right, there's there's definitely women. There's definitely a market for this now. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, reaching out to me to hopefully reach their target audience. Mm. So hopefully that will, like, even just having that, I get so many people messaging me saying, I can't find any workwear. I can't find work trousers. I can't find clothes that fit me in the workplace because nobody does them. Yeah. So for them to be doing that now. I see and, loads and of ladies saying the same. Yeah, girls just, just to well. feel yeah. comfortable going to work, wearing the mm. right gear, not wearing, like, boys' trousers that don't mm. fit them because they couldn't buy any from anywhere. I'm not like, getting a Trade Legends hoodie that's... <laughs> size, <laughs> size medium. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so, actually like a small but it's not if that makes any sense it's great if you like an oversized titty you know I try to be like yeah you can fit a load of layers underneath it he's alright at making torches he's shit at making clothing well, these aren't bad though <laughs> you do are you going to do a women's range I reckon we I'll let you into a little secret we've got some other stuff coming okay. I can't I can't divulge what it is okay but we've got some other stuff coming okay women's stuff hopefully yeah. small smalls excess well i, I can't say anything because my uh, jazz is like a size six to an eight so she can't find anything that fits her mm -hmm. she's absolutely tiny my my wife yeah so she's always moaning that she can't even find normal clothes yeah the, these companies send me boys smalls and i'm like i'll, I'll wear it but it is massive yeah. you know a boy's small is not a woman's small at um, all <laughs> anyway yeah yeah so but that's so, what I mean. Like girls are going on site wearing boys' clothes because they well, can't find or, any in their size. Yeah, already before you've even started your day, you're probably feeling a bit like yeah, because you're not comfortable. You're out of in, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, exactly. How much time do you spend per day, whether that's replying to a customer, oh, looking at different hours. stuff? Um, I'd say at least eight hours. Like what, genuinely. What about what about you? Um. I spend a lot of how, my, how, my screen you, time is about five hours a day. Have you got an iPhone? Yeah. My I mean, screen time. Oh, yeah. 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 My screen time my is about five <laughs> hours. <laughs> screen time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so just for everybody listening on Spotify, just to give you an idea, we've just decided we're going to check. We're all on iPhones, I presume. Yeah. So screen time of how much time. Does that mean on how long your phone's on? Per that, day, you're looking yeah, at your screen. Your screen is on. Yeah. So like when I'm recording stuff. Yeah. What's yours? Nine hours, 35 minutes. Oh, mate. Wow. That is a Nine lot. hours, 15 minutes. <laughs> Mine is four, that's, four hours, 55 minutes. That's my daily average. And mine wasn't turned on. <laughs> but I do, like, that, that would include me recording stuff with my camera because I record yeah. all yeah, my definitely. work. So do I. I, I, I can film for hours in a day. If you, if you go in here, which is uh, see all activity, it'll tell you yeah. which apps. Okay, what's, cool. what's, what's your TikTok time then? Yeah, TikTok's two hours a day. Whew. Um, but I do lives on TikTok, which yeah. I I can do TikTok. Like if you're doing two do, hour lives, but I don't do lives every day. Only like once or twice a week. What about you, Pete? What's your top one? For most used, Instagram. 
Yeah, yeah. Instagram's my second one at, at half an hour. Mine's two hours, three minutes on Instagram. Chrome, 30 minutes. WhatsApp, per 29. Day. Yeah. Two hours, three minutes. No TikTok on it. So how do you expect your TikTok to blow up if you're not on TikTok? That's Charlotte's job. <laughs> 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 to be fair, it's... It's, this is why you're normally good at one because it's mm. so hard to spread the time across. Yeah, YouTube's not even on mine. Like According to this, I am awesome at Pornhub. <laughs> That's why your arms are so big. That's why he stands on the right-hand side. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense now. It all makes sense. Right, I enjoyed that. Should we look at the lap time? Start your engine! got Tom up first from stickers and that so uh don't look at me like that you did it in a one mm-hmm zero Ooh. yeah zero oh my god five eight nine whoa second place Jesus that's second good. place is the first loser <laughs> I only I'm occasionally pleased. play a computer game I'm pleased but I'm disappointed at the same time do you know time. what's really annoying is we went Slightly early, I think, and everyone's beating us. So me and you are going to have a little go. Did he try really hard, Jack? Was he? Yeah. It's good. That's good. I that had less good. warm up time. Oh, the next score as well. <laughs> Mrs. I never drive on a racing <laughs> game. Yeah. You did it in a one, zero, one. Six three six. Oh, so just, just like after Ash. hundreds of a second yeah. behind Ash. That's a bricky double there. Look. To be honest, that's uh, I'll I'll take that. That's not bad. I'm bang in the middle. What a to time! Never played what a time! It's all right for a girl, isn't it? So the other thing that we always do as well is we do a giveaway of prizes. Regatta have kindly sponsored today's giveaway and there are some great prizes to win. Incursion work trousers are made with high durable fibres with spaces for your knee pads. And for those cold mornings, Regatta also have a lightweight water repellent jacket which features the latest insulation technology. But if you don't win today, fear not as all of these products can be purchased online at www.regatta.com. And as always, a crate of Trade Legends beers. For our main prize, a £250 voucher from Power Tool Mate Prizes. To find out how you can win all of these prizes and for full details, head on over to our website, www.tradelegends.uk. So, up first. Okay. To rattle them down. Mm -hmm. Darcy the Destroyer, me. all the way from Norwich. Big up. She's rode in on Big a stallion now. horse, <laughs> and, and, and she's here down. to take the tart, the, the tart, the dart total, <laughs> not the tart total. Sorry, the dart total. Somebody get this on. Somebody get this on TikTok because this is going to be a whirlwind yeah. sensation oh, here. Oh God! There we go. Oh. I mean, fair play. I'm going to get Carol Vorderman now to come over and <laughs> total them up. Tasty Tom. I, wasn't, I was just aiming for the board in general, not for actual numbers, so... And here he comes. 180. Oh. Oh. He's been playing down the dog and pheasant. <laughs> just Oh. Like that. Not bad. Can, can you at least let us know who got the most? Then out of us two. 
It looks like a darts Bad. player, doesn't he? Mm. He does, doesn't he? Looks like a what? What? <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't got the body of a darts player, though. He's trying. Could have fooled me. So, uh, Jerry Springer, final thought? Yeah, so if you've got anything you want to say to inspire the viewers, the listeners, or if you just want to shamelessly plug your channels... Or if or you want to do, shout anyone out, hi anything mom... Anything you want to say, it's just like a last word. Darcy, you can go first. Girls, if you are looking about getting into the industry, then um, if you do want any tips and tricks and anything like that, just get on my DMs on Instagram. I, I always reply um, to any girls or anyone needing any help. So just hit me up if you want any advice. Um, and yeah, if you are looking for any workwear, Scruffs are w releasing a full women's range of workwear, which is just really yeah. handy if you want to get into the industry. We'll tag them in here as well. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically all awesome. I have to say. Really, hi, mum. Good advice, though. That to be fair. Yeah. Saying drop me a message. Yeah. Because not not many people actually say like I'm available to contact. So mm -hmm. I like that. It's good. Thank you. Classy. Mm -hmm. Tom. Stickers and that. Buy everything. <laughs> yeah. Done. Let's go. My Lambo. Drop. Lambo. <laughs> Lambo. I wish. <laughs> One day. Tesla. Lambo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, um, genuinely, if you are a tradesperson and want to get branded, get in touch. It's at stickers and that on every social media go in. Mm. Um, even if you don't know what you want, just send us a message and we'll we'll get you branded. Mm. Not going to finish with any ASMR? <laughs> okay, home. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thank you for Good night. Good night, everyone. Mm. <laughs>